Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that appreciates the irony of lip-syncing to Millie Vanilli. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and take a look now at Starship Captains from Czech Games Edition. We'll get back to the review in just a moment. I want to take a minute to ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about history, books on history, military history. I even post some of my uh, lectures for my classes on there. Please check that out. Please subscribe to that channel. And now, back to the review. In Starship Captains from Czech Games Edition, one of our players take on the roles of crews of spaceships as they go around the galaxy attempting to resolve missions and to earn the most victory points. Each player has their own spaceship board with room for their crew as well as cargo uh, spots and they also have a tech uh, kind of tableau uh, tile that they'll place next to them. Players also have crew members. Their crew initially consists of a blue, a red, and a yellow ensign and one gray cadet. The game board itself is a map of the galaxy with different uh, destinations, different planets and worlds and space stations as well as different routes to move between these different locations. The board will also boast numbers for each of the locations or uh, missions that are on those locations. Now, your different crew members can do different things based on their color and different rooms on the ship. So, for instance, your red crew member, he can go to the red location, which is Helm. So he can move the ship up to two spaces. You can move your yellow uh, cadet to the yellow room, which essentially allows you to blast and shoot at pirates that may be in your way. You have got the blue cadet, which uh, essentially lets you take science cards. And then, of course, you've got the gray repair. Now, any of the three colors can go to do a repair action, but you also have the Grey Cadet. Now, the Grey Cadet can do repair actions, but he can't do any of the other actions. Now, as I say, red is pretty easy. You go there, you can move up to two locations. Um, now, sometimes your location may be blocked by a pirate. In that case, you can use the yellow action, in which case you just take a damage. Uh, you place the damage marker anywhere on your ship or on your science uh, kind of tile there. Um, and then you remove the pirate, and if there's any rewards, you can go ahead and claim those rewards. Sometimes you may get artifacts and stuff that you can put in your, in your ship cargo spaces. But you're also going to take the pirate token itself and put it in one of your cargo spaces. Now, with the tech ability, what you're doing is essentially you're taking, uh, you've got a row of tech cards. You can go ahead and you can claim one of these tech cards, and there are different kinds of tech cards. You go ahead and claim one of these tech cards and you put it in your tech tableau, but only in a space that does not have a damage token, just like you can't place um, your, your pirate tokens or other rewards in spaces on your, your cargos, uh, cargo hold if it's got a damage token in it as well. But you go ahead, you place a uh, science there, and if certain um, icons match other icons, you may get additional rewards as you place them on your tableau. Now, as I say, there's different kinds of techs. There's a room tech, which essentially means it's a new room. You can put your, your person the appropriate color on in order to activate that. You also have the ability techs, which usually enhance abilities you already have. Like, for instance, one may give you an additional move uh, if, if it's a, attached there or, or some other rewards. And then you have the omega tech. And omega tech generally are used for scoring. They give you different ways to score. And then, as I say, finally, you have the da repair damage. Uh, all that means is if you send your guy there, you can go ahead and remove one damage from either your cargo or your uh, tech uh, area. Now, once you have 
activated that done that action, you take your figure from the room and you place them in the queue. So you're taking them and you're placing them in a queue that's going to come back to you later. So the order you do this is going to determine the order in which your crew members actually come back to you. Now on your journey, you may go to planets that have missions on there. Now if you go to the mission, you put the mission card, uh, there's a little slot beside the ship, you place it there, and then you can put your crew members, instead of acting, activating them on rooms, you can actually put them on your uh, mission or next to your mission. Now if the color you place on your mission matches the color on that mission card, you can gain whatever rewards it asks for. Um, but you must have that same color in order to get those rewards. Now, if you can successfully fill all those spaces correctly, you can go ahead, then take your figures, put them back in the queue, and then you flip that card over, and there's going to be victory points uh, that that card will be worth at the end of the game. Now, as you're completing missions, the, the numbers on the triangles, they'll be counting down. You'll be losing more of those as you go forward. And once they're all gone, you have to resolve a pirate uprising. Essentially, you're going to go ahead, you're going to place new pirate tokens on the board in various places near these tiles. Uh, you go ahead, once you've got them all placed or all that you can place, then you go ahead and resume the game as normal. You're going to place new missions out there on the spots that don't have those numbers. Now, as you are playing this game, you're also going to get medals. And medals allow you to do different things. One of the things is promotions. You can essentially promote a cadet from a gray uh, cadet to a colored um, ensign. So you can go ahead and get another color that can activate those rooms as you feel you need it. Um, you can also promote an ensign to a commander by placing a ring on it. That allows him to do two actions per turn instead of just one. Now, occasionally, you can also get androids. Now, androids uh, will go in your kind of your ready room, but they will never be able to activate rooms. Instead, you can use them to essentially help you on missions. However, once it is completed a mission, it does not go in your queue. It is actually returned to the pool. Now, above the game board, you also have three different faction tracks. Now, these different faction tracks are going to... Um, give you different rewards. Essentially, when you do things on the board, you can move up on some of these faction tracks, and as you get to certain levels, it allows you to, as I say, get medals or androids or, or other fun, kooky things that you can go ahead and take and use on your ship. So you're, it's kind of a race around these three tracks, even as you're competing to complete the missions. So you take turns activating your, your units, you go around and around, and if you're, you don't have anything more you can do or nothing more you want to do, you pass. Now once everyone has passed, you go ahead and uh, kind of go to the, the, the setup for the next round, which means, first of all, you're going to take, um, there's some rewards at the top of the board, sometimes it's medals, sometimes it's uh, more cadets that you can add to your ready room. Uh, you go ahead, you take those things, uh, you also pass the first player token, you may have to move some sh stuff around on the board. So you're going to slide um, all your figures down from the queue into your ready room, except the last three figures. So you're going to slide a bunch of figures down, but three figures will always remain, which means um, that you are going to be limited necessarily with what you can do because the order in which they come back to you or the order in which you played them last turn, and you may not get the right colors that you need, but you've got to do the best with what you have. So players go around and around, they move to different systems, they shoot at pirates, they collect tech cards, they go on missions, and they have to deal with the various pirate uprisings when they occasionally occur. You're also competing along those faction tracks. But players go around and around and do this until they reach the end of the fourth round. At the end of the fourth round, you go to final scoring. You're going to add up all of the uh, points you get for cargo, for artifacts, for pirates, for where you are on the uh, the faction tracks, and for uh, various other factors. You're going to add all of those things together, and whoever has the most points wins! Starship Captains. So Starship Captains, first of all, uh, component-wise, it's it's... Dare I say it, it's a cute game. It is. It's it's cute. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, you've got the, the little kind of cardboard spaceships that you're flying around on, but then, of course, you've got your player boards. And they look great, and this, of course, is heavily influenced by Star Trek, the, the, the uniforms of the, of, of the, on the artwork and the um, kind of shapes of the spaceships and stuff. It's very much, it's very much influenced by, by Star Trek, which is great. The artwork here looks really good. It's fun. And then too, I also really enjoyed the board. I thought it looked good as well. Um, the game is interesting because it's, uh, you know, it's very Euro-y in a way, but it's not a heavy Euro by any means. And really it's, it's, it's thinky in the sense of, well, do I want to chase the missions or do I want to um, really try to get as far as I can on the faction tracks? And you, you got some, some kind of fun, fun things like that. Uh, 
The missions, though, are, are particularly interesting because you've, you've, you've got to time it so that you've got the right crew members where you can use them to go after those missions. But at the same time, do you want to use it for missions or do you want to use them for the other things they can do? Do you want to move? Do you want to attack? Do you want to get more tech cards? Do you want to play a room that is on your tech display? Um, so, there's, there's, so there's some real good choices here. And there's sometimes where people are going to end up with more units that they can do things with than other people. So people will pass, they'll, they'll lose turns um, relative to, to people with, with more units on the board. And then you toss in the androids and, and that kind of Kind of, kind of makes things interesting as well. Um, all told, this game is, like I say, cute. It's fun. It's a good, light science fiction game that doesn't take itself seriously. And it's it, it's got a good competition, and there's there's a real race there toward the end. You know, where am I on the faction tracks? How many missions have I completed? Do I what Omega cards do I have that are going to give me points? How many medals have I got? You know, you're you're always asking these sorts of questions and, and and trying to see what everyone else is doing. And I wish there was a bit more maybe take that in it. I wish you could have a little bit more interactions like that. But generally speaking, uh, I enjoyed it. My the group I played it with, uh, we all enjoyed it. Um, it, it was just a fun, not too heavy Euro that has got a great theme. It's got great components, great artwork, and it'll it'll give you it'll put a smile on your face for game nights. So recommendation from the discriminating gamer for Starship Captains is buy it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us once again on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We'd ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. And also ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to please check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. Please check it out, please subscribe, and please give a thumb to this video on Board Game Geek. That helps us out a lot as well. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I recently received an email that uh, explained how to read maps backwards. But it was spam. Could we see more of Sean? You know, you're really starting to get on my nerves. Hey, Cody. Who are you talking to? What do you mean? I was just talking to...